Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be showing you how I personally got better at Fortnite. Now, obviously, I'm not a pro. I'm nowhere near the level of someone like Clix or Booga. However, I do think I'm pretty darn decent at the game. Like, not only have my recent competitive placements kind of shown that, but anyone who has watched my channel for a while can vouch, I have improved a lot recently. That's why today, rather than me showing you a pro's routine or maybe some practice program that I think is better in theory, I'm going to be showing you exactly what I did, what worked for me, to improve so much in a short period of time. The proof is in the pudding here, people. So make sure to drop a like if this video helps you out. This routine quite literally changed my gameplay for the better. Without further ado though, let's get right into it. Alright, so this is not as much of a routine as it is me just showing the four or five different things I did to get better. Beginning with, of course, a free building map. I always told you guys, create your own blank map, call it whatever the heck you want. And free building on this blank map is pretty much how I started off every day. Every basically practice session where I came on trying to get better at Fortnite. The main reason I think it's so important to free build on a blank map with as as you can see, no weapons in my inventory. Also why I think it made me so much better in such a short period of time is that it really helped my peace control as well as blueprint editing just in general. So if you guys don't know, blueprint editing is probably the most optimal way to edit. If you ever watch pros like Arkram, Epic Whale, any top tier one pro, they're gonna do a majority of their edits with their blueprints out, which is what I have in my hand. If there's a wall, you're gonna have your wall build selected in the bottom right. Same thing with the ramp. I have my ramp selected. Hopefully by now you guys know the benefits of it because I've said it a few times. The first one is of course that you can edit from farther away. So my pickaxe out, I can start the edit just about one tile away, a little closer. Any farther from that, look, I'm pressing E, unable to edit, nothing is editing. With my blueprint though, which again, if there's a wall, I have my wall build selected. Look how far I can edit from. I'm more than a full tile away. Boom, I can edit like it's nothing. But then the other underrated aspect of it, and what's helped me the most, is I have gotten myself out of the habit of just constantly swapping to my pickaxe. So you see, I did it there. What I always used to do, and what I feel like a lot of you guys probably still do, is after every single edit, boom, pickaxe, like that. This makes it a lot easier to do consecutive edits because you're not going to get stuck. Even still, as nice as it is to, you know, crank, always whip out your pickaxe. It looks cool for creative clips, I can't lie, like right there. It is way, way better and my gameplay can vouch for it, to get into the habit of blueprint editing. Think about just the time you save for if you're going for peace control, never whipping out your pickaxe. Look how clean that is. That time that it takes just to swap to your pickaxe, then to start the edit, then to do the same thing, pickaxe again, pickaxe again. That's enough time for a good player to avoid your peace control, to establish counter peace, oh, and for you to be crying because you could not full box someone. Woo! Look at me. Come on, that's pretty darn good. But yeah, this is the first thing I did every single day to warm up. I would practice different moves like that, different peace control techniques, making sure I never swapped to my pickaxe and just practicing that way. Oh, and I did it. I still have the muscle memory for certain things. I'm trying to get out of the habit of it. Full peace. Anyways, do with that what you will. Let's move on to part number two. The next thing I did, which I believe is actually a featured game mode now, it's a creative map in the 2v2 section. I'll put the code down below. It is finest 2v2 realistics. Oh, there it is. Here we go. I would queue up for this as a solo. As you can see, I'm playing with someone random. I'm not gonna lie, I would never really talk to them. Uh, oh, well, it's bugged. Nice. Well, I guess the 2v2 is broken. I'm playing the 3v3 now, even though I used to exclusively grind the 2v2. I would always just do random, like I don't know who these dudes are. I don't even know who's gonna be on my team. But why I grinded this was for two reasons. One is, as you will see, these kids are not the greatest, and it's kind of like light practice before you get into arena or tournaments. The other reason I liked playing this was because it kind of helps your team fighting. And I feel like you could do a ton of 1v1 realistics. Those will help you get better. This guy's going crazy. 
but it's not gonna help your team fighting in game modes like trios which is currently the game mode tournaments are in oh uh bro like I said, the kids are not the greatest, but that's just part of what I did to get better because I wasn't the greatest either. And you kind of need not so great players before you go against the great ones. Hopefully nobody leaves. That's the only bad part about 3v3s and 2v2s. No joke, all I really tried to do was work on my peace control here. I wasn't really sweating my nuts off, you know, trying to get the win. I was more so seeing my piece and my counter piece. Oh, like right there. I could be shooting at this guy, but you know, I'm trying to piece him. Oh, that guy didn't even see him. Remember my blueprint editing? Let's go. You see that? Your boy looks decent. <laughs> oh, I think it just bugged out again. Well, you guys get the picture. Use this map as your kind of light pressure, a way to warm yourself up before you go against even better players, which is basically what we're gonna do next. Part three of my routine is what I just said, going against better players. I did this a ton. I would either 1v1 Young Calc, I would 2v2 with Macwood. The main person though is I would play with this man right here, 1% Forbesy. Even though Forbes has no earnings, earnings check, he is a demon in creative and he helped my mechanics get a lot better, especially fighting. Forbesy and I would either do 1v1 realistics, 1v1 PGs, or as you can see, clicks box fights. Box fights helped me out kind of the most because that was what I felt I was the worst at. Oh, he cannot hear me right now, but I told him to go as hard as he can. You guys will see, he's pretty dang good at box fights. Oh my god. He also has good ping. What's he doing? Oh, never mind. He's trash. You were lucky I was lagging. <laughs> you were so lucky I had packet loss. I hyped you, you up. So You're lucky. supposed to be the creative demon that got me better Dude, at the game. I was literally, I, I like, packet loss. Yeah, like, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Really. No troll, though. Forpsy is really good at creative. Oh, heck no. He just took back his own wall. Oh, no. He also has really good ping. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. If you're wondering where to find someone like Corpsey, you kind of got to find your own. Please, no mats. Okay. I'm telling you guys though, there is no faster and better way to get better than just playing with someone who is way better than you in either creative, real games, whichever the heck it is. In his case, he's got better pi- Emo. But Jarian, what if I'm the best out of all my friends? There's no way that you guys can't find one person be Okay. One person better than you at one aspect of your gameplay. Oh. <laughs> Even if he just has better pig, that's a good way to get better. Did I not tell you guys? He is really good at box fighting. Final round. If you win, I will give you $20. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this, but... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> 
You were so, you were freaking troubling. No, 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 that doesn't count. Wait, that doesn't count. What do you mean? It's 3-2. How are you going to end it on 3-2? What? You were, you were running. You were missing edits. Oh, my Shut gosh. Up. I'm not nervous for $20. Like well, thank you for getting me better, but uh, no $20 for you. Sorry, bro. You suck. What about if I kill you right here? GG, some of this 20. Yo, you're scamming. What the hell? GG's. Second to last thing I did to get better, which luckily Epic made a lot easier, is I grinded arena, more recently, late game solo arena. You guys can even tell how much I've been grinding this. I have 20k late game solo arena points, or just late game in general, and then I also have, I think, almost 20,000 normal arena points. Usually I got like 6,000, 7,000 points and I was done, but your boy's been grinding and it has helped me so much to become a better fighter. My kind of strategy for this is I do not just land straight in the center. I feel like that's just the quickest way to die. What I do instead is I will land kind of on the outskirts by people. I'll go fight them. I'll rack up kills just on the dead side of late game solo arena where I also cannot just get spammed and third partied. Oh, there's a third party here. Bro. Look at that box fighting with Corpsey. Dead. Oh. Guy was 1 HP. Full piece. Oh, that's the only annoying thing about late game arena. But what I was going to say was this is the quickest and best way to get fighting practice. Oh, he's in my box! What the? What am I playing? <laughs> I told you it makes you better. Oh, I got like no mats. Chill, bro. I have no mats. <laughs> Look at that. That's all the Forbesy practice. Oh, I got shot from across the map. Oh, man, <laughs> that guy's dead. Uh. I'll play one more game since they're so quick. I don't even think I gotta say what I wanted to. Why I love late game arena is like I said, you get the most fighting practice you possibly can in the shortest amount of time possible. Obviously, normal arena is still good for that, but the only issue is you find like one person every five to ten minutes. The only reason to play normal arena nowadays is just for off spawn practice. Because fighting practice, it's just so much better in late game arena. And then actual late game tournament practice, you can just play scrims, which are custom lobbies. That's basically been in my thought process on this it's how i have gotten way way better at fighting oh, this guy's gonna land in my box nice this has also been kind of my main aim training because I've mostly improved upon my mechanics. My aim's not bad, and I did make a full shotgun routine, but I only just started doing that. I probably should have prioritized my aim a little more. I also should not have wasted that launch pad. Nice. Oh my gosh. Holy, that's that blueprint editing. That box fighting with Forbesy, it pays off. Oh! <gasps> what? I think I'm hacking. Okay, somebody's got to check my computer. Bro, my shots aren't shooting. Oh 
<laughs> Let's go. That was intense. Oh my gosh. But, you know, I'm just better. Sorry, bro. Got him with the... Oh, never mind. Man! Final thing I do to get better at Fortnite, which I always do at the end of my, I guess, playing sessions or tournament sessions. I usually like to record all of the games that I play, so I'll have them in my video file. Um, I don't think... Oh, actually, I have one from the West Cash Cup yesterday. We might just use the arena game I just played. Essentially, what I'll do, though, is I will watch back fights. This was literally what I played five minutes ago and I die over here, I'm basically seeing what I did wrong and what I could have done better. So I think here, I should not have just gone to smack. I should have known he was gonna edit since he edited over here earlier. He was one of those players that just edits right away. Like right there. I pretty much pre-fired him and outplayed him on everything, except right here, I go to swing. I completely missed because he edited. He hits me 170 and then I die from another dude who ARs me across the map. You see how easy it is to kind of spot the takeaway though? I should have known from our fight and just from how he was playing in general. Also, my knowledge never to just run up and smack on his floor. This all could have been avoided if I did not do that. <laughs> Let's actually pull uh, up the West Cash Cup. Talking about Chick-fil-A. Oh, this is a good one. So this is off okay, spot okay, at Caddy. Just... This will finish off the video. Just watch this and <laughs> watch. Down. Bro, I got anyway. completely oh. dumped crazy on. Like that? He's crazy. So right here is kind yeah, of my it. lack of knowledge of actually oh. landing at Caddy. I should have seen the shotgun that was right here too, but yeah, I'm just not used yeah. to landing there. There was a shotgun. You could even see it. Right there, that's what the guy landed on, and I should have known he was gonna jump up. But as you can see, I'm focusing on these two guys gliding. I'm literally looking there. I was not expecting anyone to jump up. I didn't even have my shotgun out. That was not a good play. Like it was a great play from him, though. And then Joe2G got me a kill. That. Well, this is pretty much how I always wrap up my gaming sessions. I record everything. I go back, watch to see what I could have done better. That's how I got better at Fortnite. Overall, guys, that is what I did personally to improve at Fortnite. Hopefully, it helps you out as much as it did myself. If you enjoyed it or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like. Subscribe to the channel somewhere down here and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone in the stream for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Guys, I know I've been lazy in terms of streaming, but I do stream most tournaments and I should be streaming every other day again. I'm sorry for being lazy, but just go follow my Twitch. Otherwise, that is it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.